make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, the good, till my head full of energy goes out, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts. I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the front, of putting everyone wrong. I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost. I'ma stay last, stay proud. Never running out, never heading south. I'll be spinning out, call it what a mouth. Can't bring it down, I'll be getting out. You can never doubt, not what I'm about. Have your thoughts out, if you're in and out. I keep making sound, go another round. Don't let it bow, can't stop me now. Mr. Bean gets the lights on. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. We're going to be checking out a fun machine today that is destined to be in West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm Beach. 1940. Hardly needs an introduction, right? It's a singer. 201-2. A Rolls Royce, a singer, sewing machines. And we're going to be doing some fun stuff on this machine today. Not just regular sew-offs, but we're going to be doing some things with this machine that a lot of people don't even know you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's do it. Turn the music down a little bit. All right, let's do a zigzag. Let's do a zigzag. Why don't we do a zigzag? Let's do a zigzag. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the cool thing about this auto zigzagger, some of you might already have one of these. Others might just say, boy, I'd like to, now that I've seen what this can do with a straight stitch, lock stitch singer machine, I think I'm going to get me one of those. And they've got them various places. You can buy these auto zigzaggers. They usually come in a box similar to this. And not only can you do a zigzag, but you can do some other fun stuff with them, too. We'll kind of check that out a little bit today. I like to demonstrate the greatness of machines 
And the greatness of machines also sometimes can come through attachments like this. Now with this auto zigzagger, I'll show you another one of them. On this auto zigzagger, you can decide how you want that stitch pattern that it can generate to present. You can either set it on a normal setting all the way over here on the far left side. You can go to the middle, which is going to be the mid range, or you can go all the way to the right, which is the widest that it can sew that, that particular pattern. You loosen this little thumb screw and then you slide this little plate right here. That's our medium setting. That's our wide setting. And that's our normal setting there. And then just lock it back in place. And then when you're wanting to access the cam that's in there, you just pop this little hood open, take the cam out, put another one in, close that lid again. And these are your lubrication points right here. Everything with relating to a sewing machine in one form or another needs maintenance. So if you've got one of these or if you get one of these, make sure you lubricate in here. And there's also key lubrication points underneath this cam as well. How does this work? Well, it mounts to the presser foot bar, and then this particular part of the uh, attachment goes back and forth to manipulate that material over the feed dogs to generate that stitch. It's kind of cool, really a cool innovation. So we sewed this pattern on wide the first time. We've got it set on wide right now. I think you can see that, yeah. So I'm going to loosen this little thumb screw. Let's do the same thing. And we'll set it on the mid-range right about there. Yeah, right about there, I think. Screw it back down into place. Let's get that back underneath the presser foot again. If I can find my thread. My thread is, that's the only thing with attachments is you sometimes, like, where'd my thread go? Where's my thread? So a little bit about the setup on this machine as we get ready to do our second stitch line on Paula Noel's 1940 Singer 201-2 heading again to West Palm Beach, Florida. Apparently a very beautiful place to live. I've never been there. Paula has said, yo, come on, we'll, we'll do some fishing. We'll do some like deep sea fishing. I'm like, okay, I just don't want to catch a shark. I mean, what do you do when you catch a shark? What happens with that? So our setup today is this. We're going to be sewing with a Schmetz size 9014 leather needle. We're going to be doing a leather needle on cotton on, well, a variety of different materials. You'll see. And uh, our thread is a basic Coates and Clark all-purpose thread. I call it kind of the, the cheapy thread. And I like to use, you know... Uh, a less than premium quality of thread just to demonstrate how well the machine is running. If it can manage with a lesser thread, if you put a higher grade thread in there, like a Guterman or, or one of the other premium threads, it's going to really, really create some magic. Now, when you set this machine up to sew, does anyone know? Oh, I didn't even mean to rhyme that and it rhymed. When you set this machine up to sew, does anyone know? which way the flat side of the needle goes which way does the flat side go on this machine ah good morning to emma good morning hey sunny hey i gotta ring the bell i'm gonna ring the bell our sunny is here welcome sunny welcome 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 Oh, welcome to Renee, too. And welcome to, I think I said welcome to Emma already. I think I did. Maybe. And Emma is correct. If you go to the manual on page 13, you can see on the manual, page 13, it says put the flat side of the needle shank to the left and then you're going to be threading this machine from right to left and the other thing about this machine is you've got to be careful also how you set up the bobbin inside of here 
when this bobbin is turning and dispensing the thread in the sewing process, is it turning counterclockwise? Like a lot of the singers? Is it turning clockwise? Which way is it turning? Does anyone know? So in other words, you drop the bobbin in. You can see we have a, a drop-in style bobbin. When you drop it in, is that thread going to be over the top, which would indicate it's going to be turning counterclockwise, or is that thread underneath the bottom of that of that uh, bobbin? And when it's dispensing, it's going to be turning clockwise. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Emma, Emma's like jumping all over this today. It's going to be a, a rotary hook system, uh, Sonny. It'll be a rotary hook system. That's a great question. So when this is operating, it's going to be turning like this over and over and over again instead of oscillating from side to side like the 1591 does. A lot of the class 15s, pretty much all of them, are set up with an oscillating uh, hook system. And if some of you are brand new to sewing or vintage, Oscillating means that it acts like a pendulum and it's turning like this back and forth. Rotate uh, a rotary hook system means it's spinning full circle again and again and again and again. So this is a rotary hook system. Ah, oh, good morning to Kathy. Well, Emma was right. When you drop this bobbin in for setting the machine up to sew, Make sure when you drop it in, that you drop it in like this, so the thread is coming underneath. Oh, you can't see that. Hold on. Make sure you drop it in so the thread is coming underneath. So as it's turning, it's turning clockwise like this. So left side, the, uh, uh, the, the, the needle shank with the flat side to the left, the bobbin should be dropped in with a thread underneath the bottom so it's turning clockwise and then thread it from right to left. Other than that, it's a pretty easy machine to set up. Pretty doggone easy. So, all right. And these are some of the sew-offs I did on Paula's machine when I was going through the final con confirmation, just kind of making sure that all of the adjustments were spot on and uh, we had a good solid foundation to launch into this live stream today. I love live streams, don't you? Yeah. I'm inspired to do a little bit of rapping. So let me turn this up for just a second. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that's getting slow, spitting fast. Knock the world, smack the gas. Think I'm all paying less, but I don't know what that can erase. All the past and the pettiness. A reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious. You can do it by time. All right, I'm done. I'm done rapping. So we made an adjustment on this attachment, didn't we? This auto zigzagger that Singer came out with. We sewed the first line of stitches on the widest. Now we're in the medium range. We're going to try stitching another line and look at them comparatively. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do um, the normal range for what this uh, zigzagger is able to do. Let's try this again. And give a good listen if you can. Give a listen to, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way. Give a good listen to us, to uh, Paula's machine running. This 201-2, I can't even tell you just how smooth. It is so smooth. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's do this next one. Get my take-up arm at the highest position. There we go. And again, we are creating a zigzag pattern on a straight stitch only machine. Isn't that fun? Isn't it fun to defy the odds? It just is. All right, here we go. That's it. We're done already. Wish I could make it more difficult, more dramatic, but I can't. And the other thing we can do with this, obviously, to change the look of these patterns even more, these are the two we've done so far. To change the look of these patterns even more, we can mess around with the stitch length, can't we? We could do the same stitch again, but shorten the stitch length up because right now we're set on six or seven stitches per inch. 
If we shorten it to about 10 stitches per inch, wonder what that would look like, don't you? Let's do it. Let's do it and try that. Let me give these threads a clip and we're going to sew the same stitch pattern again. We're just going to shorten that stitch length. So I'll get this back into position so we're ready to, to do that stitch row and then we'll make that adjustment on the machine and see, see what we think of that. That's the fun thing about stitches, isn't it? The fun thing about stitches is we don't have to do it like everybody else does it. This is what I did the first time. You may have done it totally. Hold on a second. The camera's crooked. You may have done it totally differently than this. You may have gotten a totally different outcome than what I did. Let's see if that LED light is. Yeah, that LED light will be messing with us again today. That's okay. So... On the 201-2, this is our stitch, stitch line control over here, like a lot of the Singer machines. And right now, we're all the way on the bottom, so we're doing about six or seven stitches per inch. We slowly move it up and up and up and up, and we can get all the way down to 30 stitches per inch right about there. And then if we want to sew in reverse with this Rolls-Royce of Singers, we move it all the way to the top. And you remember recently I showed you that FOF 130 machine on that FOF 130-6 machine that belongs to my friend from Wisconsin, you move it all the way to the bottom for a reverse. So every machine's just a little bit different, isn't it? So we're moving this to right around, why don't we say 15, 15 stitches per inch, somewhere in that neck of the woods. And let's see how we can change the look of that same stitch that we generated through this auto zigzagger. And right now I've got the light off so it doesn't mess with the camera quite as much. There we go. Yeah. All right. Let's do the same stitch again. And all we did was change the stitch length. And let's see how different it looks. I think it'll look quite a bit different. Yeah. That's going to be so tight. Crazy tight. Oh, isn't that cute? That's downright cute. Look at that puppy. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, you could you could even go shorter than this on the stitch length to really, really tighten up that stitch pattern. Here we're wide and crazy. Here we're kind of mid-range. And here we've really shortened that stitch length dramatically. Or you can say, I don't want to mess around with the stitch length. I want to leave it on the six, but I want to see what that pattern looks like if I make that change on the auto zigzagger like you were talking about. We've done it on wide. We've done it on medium, and now if we move it all the way to normal, what will that look like? So again, it's it's real simple to change it. We just loosen this little thumb screw, and we slide this little plate here all the way so that it's in the rear. Tighten it back down, and now we're going to be sewing with the auto zigzagger at what they consider to be the normal setting, normal. I don't think anybody in this channel is completely normal. So it's kind of weird for us to do this, but we're going to give it a go. So we've done wide, we've done medium. Now we're doing normal. And I moved the stitch length back to the, uh, the, the largest stitch setting on it, right around six stitches per inch. Let's see what the stitch looks like. And then maybe we'll flip around with some of these other cams that this auto zigzagger can use, just so you can see the capabilities of what a straight stitch lock stitch machine from Singer can really do. Because everyone always, you know, talks about, oh, I don't want just a straight stitch machine. Well, with attachments like this, you're not limited to straight stitching, are you? You can do all kinds of fun stuff. All right, let's do this other one. So again, stitch length setting is six and our our setting on the auto zigzagger is normal let's see what it looks like here we go and listen to this machine run listen 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 Shh. here we go isn't that that's so unusual looking isn't it because our stitch length is so long right now it's barely even a zigzag. It almost looks like a little, like little hills, doesn't it? And if we go over to the, we'll leave the auto zigzagger setting the same. We'll change the stitch length back to a shorter stitch and you'll, we'll see this get sucked back in again, won't we? That's kind of cool. Let's give that a try.
Okay, so the auto zigzagger setter will leave it on normal. Let me get this back into position. Oh, the material underneath the presser foot, you guys know this already because you're so smart, but the material underneath the presser foot is going to be 100% cotton, and it's got a stiffener in between it, similar to what you would get from the benefits of, say, having a, a quilt batting in the middle of there. So we're it, it does help to stabilize the super thin cotton and it gives you a little bit better stitch integrity, which, which is why I do it sometimes. So let's shorten this again. This time we're going to even go a little bit shorter. We'll go down to about 20, almost 25 stitches per inch. And we'll leave the auto zigzagger set on normal. Let's see what we get this time. Let's see what we get this time. And as you're, I, I didn't even say it, but as you're looking at Paula's machine, you might say, Holy cow, that's a shiny machine, kind of like Paula did when I posted the pictures on Facebook. It's a real pretty looking uh, 201-2. It, it's got that beautiful faceplate. It's just got all of the look. It's it's not only a sewer, but it's also a looker too. You know what I mean? And this is all original paint. Um, I could have done a complete repaint on it. Paula and I decided we're going to stick with uh, trying to maintain original paint, original decals. So all you see here is that I took it to the paint shop. I stripped off all of the hardware off of the machine. I conditioned the paint surface very carefully, taking down a couple of layers of clear coat to get a nice finished smooth surface using about two to 3000 grit sandpaper. And then put brand new clear coat on the machine, reassembled it. And, uh, and the result is we've taken more of a step of preservation then restoration, kind of a mix of the two. And you've got a machine that looks like it's showroom ready, doesn't it? So Paula will really be able to invite her friends over. And if she takes it out, she's going to be able to really show this off as a not only a machine that can sew a page 34 stitch, but a machine also that just looks gorgeous. It just looks gorgeous. So, yeah. All right. That was my shameless little plug. So let's do this stitch again. Again, we've got the uh, auto zigzagger set on normal. We've got our stitch length all the way down to 15 to 20 stitches per inch. Well, let's see what we get this time. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll try changing the cam out. All right, here we go. Listen to this machine run. Here we go. And again, we're sewing cotton with a leather needle. I mean, we are just rebels, aren't we? Oh my goodness, look at that. That is such a petite, tiny little baby zigzag. Look at, look at that compared to the other two rows we did. But it goes back to what I say all the time, right? When you have a sewing machine, don't watch other people and say, oh, I need to do it like that. You map your own course. You create your own path and decide what you want that stitch to look like. I've done all of these stitches so far on this live stream. You might, would have, you might have come up with something totally different based on the adjustments you made on the machine. Maybe we, we would have sewn this instead of on the normal setting. We could have sewn this same stitch on the wide setting or on the mid-range mid setting on this auto zigzagger, and it would totally change the look of this stitch. So you be, you be the creator of what you do with your machine. And you can certainly watch what other people do, but ultimately you pick your own course and it's always going to be the right course. It's always going to be the right course. Yeah. And the setup of putting this, I didn't show you guys. I already had it set up when we came into this live stream. But the setup of attaching this auto zigzagger is going to be the same as any other attachment, the only thing you have to do different when you screw it to the presser foot uh, bar on the back is make sure when you get it into position that you have this little arm, this little lever going over the, uh, the joining point for the needle bar right up here. Because as it's sewing, it's going up and down and moving the mechanics of this auto zigzagger so that this front uh, throat plate opening on here shifts back and forth and moves and manipulates that material. So if this isn't over there, you're not going to get any action from this attachment uh, at all. You can't even see what I'm looking at. Let me try that again. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
So this is the little arm I was trying to talk about, and, I, and you couldn't even see it. It's coming off of this attachment, and it's got to go right over that little piece right there where you would tighten your, your needle into position. It kind of just slides over that, and then you anchor it to the presser foot bar uh, on the back. Yeah, it's real easy. It's real, real easy. And then you have to manually take that thread then that comes off the top and kind of feed it through that little throat plate opening because there's no little slat in here that you can just kind of draw it through. You have to kind of tuck it in and pull it off and then bring it to the back. So just make sure you do that as well. But other than that, it's, it's real simple. Yeah. All right. Let's change out the cam and try a different cam output from this auto zigzagger on Paula's machine and see what we think. And I should take a quick, a quick look at the live chat and say welcome to a couple more folks. Ah, including the owner of this machine, Paula Noel. Welcome, Paula. Welcome to this live stream. And uh, welcome to Steve or Steven. Some people are real particular about that. If, if they have Steven, doggone it, you better call him Steven. So I'm going to say Steven unless Steven says, you can call me Steve. Yeah. And I already said hello to Renee and I said hello to Sonny. Yeah, I think I, I think I've greeted everybody. I think I've greeted everybody. I think so, maybe. All right, let's get this material back into place. And then we're going to change out the cam on this auto zigzagger. So again, changing out the cam, let me try to get the right camera setting. Oh, and I've got to show Paula something that she's probably, because it's been so long, some of my projects just really, really kind of get drug out. And it's been so long since we've talked about Paula's machine until I started doing all the posts recently. And by the way, if you are if you are a Facebooker, you'll want to check out the progress pics that I posted uh, uh, in 10 different groups on Facebook of Paula's 201-2. It really tells you the story and it gives you the journey that this machine has gone through. But Paula probably doesn't remember way back when. I had these needles and I was deciding what I wanted to do with them. And I offer them to the first person that kind of jumped out. And Paula was the first one to jump out. These are actually gold plated needles that are made in Germany, gold plated. And I used one of them and it was okay, but it wasn't quite a Schmetz needle. You know what I mean? It did a beautiful job, but I've got my own bias. I've got my own bias about Schmetz needles. So Paula was the first one to jump out at that time, and I've held onto these all these months so that when this machine gets mailed to West Palm Beach, Florida, these gold-plated needles that were made in Germany can go with the machine, and then Paula can kind of check them out, you know? So that's one of the special little surprises or goodies, which is no longer a surprise because I just revealed it, that's going to be going with this machine when it gets shipped this coming week. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't see gold-plated needles too often, but you know what? The Germans are classy people, and they do all kinds of fun things, don't they? All right, so let's do this now. Let's change out this cam. See if I got the right angle this time with the camera. I think I do. So we're basically going to open the hood on this auto zigzagger, kind of like that. I'm going to lift this cam out. It's, th it's that easy. You just pull the cam right out of the machine or out of the machine attachment, I should say. And if, you, if you're curious to look inside real quick with me, that's kind of what the innards look like. It almost looks like a clock, doesn't it? And there's all kinds of lubrication points in there as well. So if you've got an auto zigzagger and you've never serviced it like your machine, you want to do that because these parts in particular, because they're lighter gauge metals, will tend to pick up moisture and they can rust. Uh, they can get real rusty, kind of like this other one did. I'll show you the one that I showed you initially. It's kind of hard to see. But this other one you can see inside of there, I just got done lubing, lubing it again. But you can see over here and also on top here as well, there's some rust that developed uh, just because it sits idle. It's not being used. And uh, it'll pick up the moisture in the workshop. So... All right, let's put another cam in. Let's see, we just did the zigzag.
Oh, let's see. Kind of debating, debating, debating. I'll tell you what. Instead of me debating, why don't you guys choose? Why don't you, why don't you guys or gals choose? This is one of the ones we can choose. Here's another one that almost looks like the McDonald's symbol. This is almost like the, uh, what do they call those, bugles? It almost looks like a bugle, and this looks kind of like a, a flying bird or something like that. Hopefully you can see those in the shot. So should we do the bird or should we do the um, kind of the bugle thing or whatever it is? And you may have totally different names for these. What do you think? Emma's saying arrows. Paula is, Paula is saying both. And Paula's Paula's the boss today because this is her machine. So we're going to do both. And I guess we'll do the arrow one first. And then we will do the bird style one. I think this is the arrow one that Emma was referring to, the one that's on the left. So we'll put that one in first and then I'll set the bird one to the side. And when you drop it in, you just kind of drop it in until it seats in the place. There's a special little sweet spot for it. It'll it'll kind of just drop down. At least it should drop down. There we go. Just kind of drops down. And then you can tell because you can feel the mechanics moving as you're wiggling it. And if you wiggle it really hard, it would actually move that part of the throat plate on the front of the attachment. So after that, you just close the little hood. And now we're ready to do the arrow one that... Uh, is next in the lineup, as they say. Yeah. All right. So let's do the arrow one. Now, here's here's another question for all of you. Right now, as we're looking at the auto zigzagger, it's set on normal. If we were to move this to the middle, it would be in the mid range. And if we move it over here, it'll be on the wide range, the widest setting that this zigzagger can generate the stitch pattern. Should we leave it where it is, move it to the mid range or move it to the wide range? the widest uh, setting for the auto zigzagger. And then the second part of that will be where should we set the stitch length on the machine? So you guys pick normal, mid, wide, and then the stitch length. And then we'll sew that stitch with this arrow pattern. And Steven, Steven is saying do, uh, let's see, Emma is saying middle. Steven is saying do wide but a short stitch, do wide, but a short stitch. So since Emma's, let's see, Renee is agreeing with Steve. Okay. Widest and set stitch tight to show off embroidery. I've got so many requests. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Ah! I'm going to go with the owner first. I, I, I'm sorry, you guys, but one of the benefits of sending the machine to the workshop when we do a live stream, and a premiere like this, it's all about the owner. It's it's not that the rest of us aren't important. We are. And that's why everybody chimes in. And I'm going to try to do all of these options. But Paula, Paula is the one that invested in this machine. So I'm going to do hers first. Then we'll do uh, Stevens or Steve's. And uh, oh, hello to uh, Earl as well. I think I'm saying that correctly. I hope I am. Welcome to Earl. I don't know that I've seen Earl's name before. Maybe I have. The leaders probably are more familiar with most of you than me because I'm always busy at the machine with these live streams and they have more of an opportunity to interact with you. Okay, so Paula had said, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, Paula said, where's Paula's? Widest stitch length tight. Okay, so we're going to set this on the widest. So all we do is loosen this little thumb screw, okay? And then we're going to slide this, like so, all the way to there. So this little doohickey here slides all the way to the rear to get us to the widest setting. And then we're going to set the stitch length at a fairly tight stitch setting. So this is our stitch length. We're, we're really tight right now. We're down to like, golly. We're down to like uh, 15. Paula, Paula, where do you want it, dear? Where do you want it? I've got it like on around 15, almost 20. Should we leave it that 
that short or do you want it a little bit longer? You can kind of see where we're at right now. I'm going to wait for Paula to chime in and see what she says here. Okay, we're going to try to make the arrows solid looking. So solid looking. So that's going to be, and part of that will be controlled by the cam output, which I won't have as much control over since we set it, we set it on the widest setting. It's going to, it's going to lessen the tightness of that a little bit. I think Paula, just so you know, because we've set this on super wide with a short stitch. So we'll see how it looks. We can always move it to normal or to the mid range and try it again. So it's not a showstopper. So I'm going to leave it, leave it right around there. And let's do this pattern and see what we think. Let's see what we think of this pattern. Yeah, if I turn my, if I turn Paula's LED light on, see, it goes crazy, doesn't it? Move this back just a little bit. See, when I back it up a little bit, we get away from that waviness on the screen, which is kind of good. All right, let's try this again. And watch that auto zigzagger do its magic. You'll also see that the cam itself is obviously turning as the machine is running. All right, let's give this a go. So we've got, again, we've got the auto zigzagger uh, set at the widest setting. We've got the stitch length right around, probably around 12 stitches per inch, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Let's see what we get. And then we can always tweak it because all of you had great suggestions on how we can set this up. All of you had great suggestions. All right, here we go. And listen to Paula's machine again. They don't call this the Rolls Royce of Singers for any reason. I should say me because I was the first one to do it. But hey, whatever. All right, here we go. <laughs> So again, we've got the auto zigzagger set on wide. Yeah, it's not as tight. I bet, it, I bet if we change the auto zigzagger setting or, you know what? I'll get your input. We've got an arrow pattern that's starting to kind of come, come to life, but we got to tighten it up even more because Paula said, let's make it super tight. And we, we didn't achieve this with our settings here. That's where This is where, as you get to know it a little bit better, you can kind of manipulate it. So we can make the stitch length shorter, which will pull it tighter together. But also we're too wide right now, maybe on the auto zigzagger. So maybe we should move it, do the same thing exactly as it is, but change the auto zigzagger from wide all the way down to normal. What do you guys think? What does Paula think? Yeah, may have, may have to adjust it on the fly. Absolutely. Well, let's try this as a first step. Uh, just to see what how it changes the look of the pattern let's see how it changes the look of the pattern let's go back over here and right now we're set super wide on this let's go the opposite way we'll loosen this up and we're going to take it all the way to the most narrow that we can get it that's all we're going to change right now we're moving this from super wide to super narrow or at least what they consider to be the normal setting normal mid-range wide. We're going to go normal. See what we think. We'll do the same stitch pattern with exactly the same stitch length. And we'll see how we can change the look of this stitch. And if we don't get quite the look, then we'll also shorten it more as well. See, see how that changes the look of it. Okay, here we go. Same, same stitch pattern, the arrow pattern. We took the, uh, we took the, um, auto zigzagger from super wide to a normal setting here we'll kind of go right about there let's see how we can change the look of that now all right here we go <laughs> I 
See, it is kind of going on the fly. Look what we got this time. We might get the result that we want, but now we're probably too short. The stitch length setting needs to be lengthened a little bit so we can see more of the form of that pattern. It's almost indis indistinguishable now. See what we did to it? And maybe the other option is instead of going to normal, we could always set the auto zigzagger on the mid-range too and then mess around with the stitch length until we get the desired result. I think the first sew off we did, we were a little bit closer to what we were aiming for. And maybe what we needed to do is just shorten that stitch length even more. So I, I may have taken us the wrong direction by changing the setting on the auto zigzagger. But you can see what impact we had. You can almost make it out, but not quite. Okay. And Emma's offering a really good suggestion. Let's try this next. Let me show you the auto zigzagger again. And Paula is agreeing. So let's loosen this up. We're going to go back to the widest setting. We're back on the widest setting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to manipulate this stitch pattern by shortening it even more than we already are. I think I think the ladies are on the right path. I do. All right, let me get this back into position. <clears throat> so this is what we've gotten so far. You kind of see that. All right, let's go over here now. And we're going to make this even shorter now. We're probably at right around close to 20, close to 20. We're going to bring it way, way down now, all the way to about 30. And hopefully I'm not sewing in reverse. Hopefully I didn't go too far. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, the arrow pattern, auto zigzagger is at the widest. We're almost, we're probably right around 30 stitches per inch as far as the setting. Let's see how we get as far as the stitch pattern now. All right, here we go. Right, the suspense, the suspense. Are we going to be closer to the mark? We absolutely are. And this is where I say you guys are so smart. We could probably even go shorter than this. We could even go shorter because I think we have just a little bit of a margin to work with, but we're getting really close to the look that we're looking for. And realize this again as far as the look of this stitch. We're working with a size 9014 leather needle. We're working with a leather needle today on Paula's machine. We're not working with an embroidery needle or a size 70 or 80 size needle. We're working with a much larger mid-range type needle, and it's designed for leather. So we're getting what we're getting in part because of our setup as well. I'll kind of hold it like that so you can see it. But that not it fun? Isn't it fun to see how by subtle adjustments... As Paula put it, kind of like going on the fly, going on the fly, we can take the same stitch pattern and give it totally different looks based on our setup choices, how we set up the auto zigzagger, what stitch length we select. It just totally changes the look of that. And then ultimately, we could decide what kind of needle and thread are we going to be using? Are we going to be using uh, the Coates and Clark Trilobal thread that I've shown on this channel multiple times. It's an embroidery style thread. 
to really accentuate the look of the stitches that we're doing with the auto zigzagger, that would be a better choice. And then choosing a more appropriate needle. Again, most people, as a rule, they don't sew 100% cotton with a leather needle. They don't do it. They don't sew cotton with a leather needle. But we do because part of what we're going to be sewing today is leather. And we'll probably try doing this same arrow pattern on some saddle grade leather next before we take this auto zigzagger off and then we move into some more regular generic type sewing without the auto zigzagger on. But we really made some great progress and we made it because of all of you, Emma and Paula and others that I might have missed saying, Scott, make it wide, set the auto zigzagger to the widest setting but let's really, really take that stitch length down. Let's really take it down. And again, I don't think I'm at the max. I think I could even go further than this. But Paula will become the master of this machine when it gets out to West Palm Beach, Florida. And she'll be able to, oh, I didn't tell you, Paula. I forgot to tell Paula. Goody gumdrops. Paula, you weren't expecting this auto zigzagger. We talked about it early on. But you decided, you know, I, I'm going to skip the auto zigzagger. I decided to give you one as a gift. So the one that's on the machine is going with the machine. I'm not just demonstrating it. I'm demonstrating it as you'll be able to use it on your machine out in West Palm Beach. So I think that this, this machine was originally a, as intended as a special gift from Jess, who is uh, Paula's husband, our Canadian friend. Remember, Paula's husband is from Canada. So he was going to give this to her as a special gift. And so from Jess, by way of me, uh, you're getting an auto zigzagger with this machine uh, as well, just as a special thank you, a special bonus. And I do that with customers all the time. They'll get something in the mail all of a sudden and say, well, I didn't pay for this. I didn't expect this. Isn't that fun? Isn't it fun to surprise someone with something that they love, but they never expected? So yeah, kind of cool. Oh, your husband is Vince? Oh, Jess is your daughter. Okay, never mind. I totally messed that up. So it's a gift from Vince then by way of me. Or it could be a gift from Jess too. Who knows? Yeah. All right. I got it right now. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, auto zigzaggers are just, they add a total dimension, a new dimension to a straight stitch, lock stitch machine, don't they? And again, you can use these auto zigzaggers. You can use these on any, on any Singer, any Singer lock stitch machine can use these. So if you've got a variety of different Singers, let's say you have a Featherweight and you've got a 1591 and you've got a 201, and you have a 99K, you can use this auto zigzagger on any of those Singer lock stitch machines. And you could name many other models as well. And they also made these for slant machines too, but only for a brief period of time. I think I have one in my personal collection where it's an auto zigzagger, but it's designed more for like a, say a 404, like the one that I prepared for Sunny. Uh, with uh, the donation that she and Craig made to our fundraiser way back when for the History Museum. Um, they do have auto zigzaggers designed for slants too, slant machines. So, so Paula has a bunch of different machines. She'll be able to potentially use this auto zigzagger for a variety of different things. So I totally forgot what, what we were going to do next. I think we were going to maybe try the other cam. We'll do the bird cam now. Yeah, if that's okay with Paula. Oh, you're welcome. And now I now now everyone knows your husband's name. So periodically in these live streams, someone's just going to pop out of the shadows and go, yo, Paula, how's Vince doing? And if they really tick you off, Paula, and you consider them a troll, none of our regulars, our regulars are, are upstanding folks. But if you have a troll do that just to mess with you, you know what you can do. You can take out your hammer and you can put them in the penalty box. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, oh gosh. I'm such a bad influence sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's do the bird one next. <laughs> So again, our setup today, if you're joining the live stream a little bit late, we've got this Singer Auto Zigzagger on Paula Noel's 1940 uh, Singer 201-2. And I've also got to do a shout out to Paula because one of the things that really intrigued her about this particular 201-2 is that it comes from, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Paula, don't tell them either. I'm going to give you guys the serial number for this machine. And you can tell us in our classroom how many were in this production group size and why was Paula Noel so excited about this specific 201-2 because of the size of the production group size. All right. And also, if you want to put in the birthday to the machine, that would be super cool. We already know 1940, but we don't know the month and day. So the serial number on this machine, and I'll type it in the live chat as well, is A as in Apple. F as in Foxtrot, 438 486. So again, AF 438 486. And you know what? In lieu of me doing it, if one of the leaders, Paula, uh, Sonny, or whoever, uh, Emma, if you want to type in that serial number into the live chat just so folks have it as a reference point, that would be awesome. Uh, A as in Apple, F as in Foxtrot, 438. 486 438 486 with a prefix of AF AF. Awesome. Thanks, Paula. Thank you. All right, let me get that bird cam in now. Let me get the bird cam in. Let's get that bird cam in. And there are other cams for these beyond the ones that I'm showing you right now. I believe that Singer came out with a total of eight. So I'm going to take this one out. I'll set it to the rear. We'll get the bird cam one now. And you saw I, I just kind of turned it and then it kind of just drops right down beautifully. Close our little hood. And now we're ready to do the bird cam next. Awesome. Well, thank you to Emma and Paula. They both put the, the serial number in there. So if someone is willing to uh, research that other than one of the leaders, uh, and if no one else does it, then I'm sure one of the leaders will jump in and post it. But if someone's willing to do that and you reach out to me afterwards and uh, Paula or Emma can, can type my cell number into the chat if they want as well, or my email address, however you prefer to contact me, if you're the first one to post it, the full birth date and the production group size of Paula's 201-2 from 1940, then I will send you something really cool. And it will blow your mind what I mail you. And you could be anywhere in the world. I don't care. Uh, I was just talking with Emma the other evening, and she had mentioned a program on... No, wait a second. Yeah, she had mentioned a program on Netflix that she was watching. And they talked about Tasmania, Australia. Tasmania, Australia. It almost sounds like a fake place, but it's real. And I said to her, don't you remember? It's been a number of years ago, but we have a friend that's part of the Cow Country family that won one of our mini contests, and I mailed him a singer book all the way to Tasmania, Australia. And there's actually, under the playlist on the Cow Country YouTube channel, there's actually a playlist uh, uh, that is friends around the world or something like that. And I did a little mini clip uh, talking about Alan, my friend from Tasmania, Australia, and the gift that I mailed him. And he shows the gift and he shows some of his machine. It's just fun. So you'll want to check out that playlist as well. Check out that playlist. Yeah. It looks like Renee posted an answer. Let me see if the answer is spot on. I'm going to I'm going to say that Renee nailed it. Yeah. Renee is uh Renee is spot on. I think somebody just sent me a message, hold on. <laughs> I 
Oh, this is a customer inquiry. This has nothing to do with our live stream right now. I just had to check real quick because the last time we did a live stream we, and I was talking about the coffee and all of that. Um, and I, I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag here. I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, that along with the auto zigzagger that I'm sending to Paula, because of the generosity of Veronica Oyama, Veronica and Emily uh, Oyama from Texas. Remember, they gave us so, all of those bags, half pound bags of this premium luxury ground coffee stuff. You know, it's a little bit above my pay grade because I don't buy the, the fancy beans and grind them and all that. I just go to the restaurant across the street and whatever they give me is what I get. But this is this is like ultra premium coffee that Veronica and her daughter donated to the people that submitted essays for our calico contest when we hit 12,000 because of how many bags she sent me. And because not all of the people that wrote essays contacted me back and gave me, not all the people that wrote essays contacted me back and gave me their addresses. Um, I know that Chris did, um, Doreen and Kevin did. I think that was it. And then, uh, you know, Kathy Pecor is going to be coming to Oconto to pick up the grand prize from that contest, the 170th anniversary Singer uh, Class 15 machine, which has an oscillating hook system. So, but I've got still a bunch of extra coffee. And so what I decided to do is I'm going to mail one of those bags. They're a half pound of this premium, crazy, amazing, are you kidding me, coffee to all of the leaders as well. I'm going to mail a bag down to Bill in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. I'm going to mail a bag with this 201-2 to Paula Noel. I'm going to mail a bag to uh, to Emma. And uh, am I forgetting anybody? Again, when you're on camera, your mind just kind of goes. <clears throat> but I'm going to be mailing extra bags out to the leadership team as well because I've got extra ones. And uh, if I end up keeping one, I'll keep it, but I don't, I don't even think I have a coffee maker. Do I have a coffee maker? I don't think I do. So I'll probably en end up trying to give all of them away. And it's not that I don't appreciate them. And then along with that, with Paula's 201-2, I'm going to be including some of my pink grease and a couple of other goodies along with that as well. So anyway, there you go. Yeah, Renee, if you want, you can either send a message directly to me uh, through the Cow Country page, um, or if you want to text it, or if you want to email it. And um, I, I didn't look at the chat in detail, but if any of the leaders want to post my cell phone number, you could also text it to me. Or if you want to post my Gmail account, you can email it to me. Everyone has a different preference as far as how they like to communicate. So I'll leave that up to Renee so that I can get her address and then mail her something uh, exciting and fun and cool. Yeah. All right. We still have to do this arrow pattern, you guys. We still have to do this arrow pattern. But congratulations to Renee for nailing it. So the big deal about Paula's 201-2 that we're looking at right now on camera is it is incredibly rare machine. Whenever Singer would do production group sizes, they typically were always going to be right around 50,000 machines. 50,000 machines was pretty typical. Occasionally, they would even go above that and they would do groups of 100,000 machines. So when you get a machine like this that came from a production group size of only 10,000 machines, that's almost getting into the category and rarity class of what we would expect to see with a Singer featherweight free arm machine a 222k that came out of scotland only because those those group sizes on the on the machines that came out of scotland the 222ks the featherweight free arms were typically right around five to ten thousand machines per group size that for the average group size is what i meant to say so this machine right here is almost at that level it, it is at that level because again, the, the 222Ks, typically five to 10,000 machines in a production group size. Paula's machine is at that threshold, 10,000 machines in that production group size. That is crazy, crazy rare. Crazy rare. 
you don't see that very often, especially within the 201-2 series, within that class machine. You don't see it very often. So that's a big deal. And that's why Paula was so jazzed, so excited about this particular 201 that I offered her. All right, give me a second. I'm going to wipe off the bed just a little bit because I think I got so excited I might have spit a little bit. I'm joking. I might have. It's possible. And again, like I told Paula, this, this machine it has a totally different look to it now with this brand new clear coating. Seven to eight layers of clear coating. So it's it's got like a bulletproof finish on it now. But I'll tell you this. It's not perfect. It's not like that machine that ended up going to the Smithsonian. It's got little this and little there, you know, where little imperfections. But you know what? Paula is so astute and so well-grounded. She said, you know what, Scott? That clear coating is going to accentuate that little scar on the machine, which shows that this machine was well-used, well-loved, and was probably... I mean, it did incredible projects from its birth back in 1940. And I think that's the right way to look at it. a machine doesn't have to be absolutely without flaw, be perfect. And this machine is perfect. Yeah, it is. It's perfect. All right. So let's get back to work. Doggone it. We're just blah, blah, blah. And we're talking about coffee. We're talking about all kinds of crazy things. What's going on? Woo! All right. Let's get this back underneath the presser foot. Come on, buddy. Get into position. We're almost done. Okay. You know what? Because you're being naughty, I'm going to use a brand new piece. This is the one we did. We're going to use a brand new piece now. I set up two just in case. I'm glad I did. All right. So now we're going to be doing the bird stitch. I wonder if there's an official name for it. I have no idea. I got no idea whatsoever. And we're going to sew it with the same settings we did the last one successfully based on the input that Paula and Emma gave with that arrow stitch. Yep. So let's do the same settings. We've got the auto zigzagger. As you can see, we've got it set at the widest setting. We've got our stitch length cranked way down. We're even going to go a little bit further. It's going to nudge it just slightly. So it's probably hard to see in the shop, but we are like dead on with that 30. I just hope we're not so far that it to start sewing in reverse. I'll make a quick adjustment. So let's see what we get with this bird pattern. Let's see what we get with this bird pattern. All right. And again, listen to Paula's Rolls Royce of Singers run. It is silky, silky smooth. All right, here we go. Let's make birds. Let's make birds. Just watch how, I've got to pause real quick. Watch almost like when I talked about on the other machines that I showed you recently, we looked at some more contemporary machines like the Juki, and we looked at others that use what I call the tri-motion, where it's manipulating the material using, in this case, this attachment, but it's manipulating that material forward, back, right, left, every which way, but upside down, maybe that too. And it gives us the capabilities to generate these amazing stitch patterns with a straight stitch only machine. The needle bar is not moving at all. It's in a fixed position, but this attachment is manipulating the material. As you can see, I'm going to be struggling to steer it, but it's going to get the job done eventually. Here we go. And stop. So we'll see what we got with this pattern. And again, if we use a different needle, if we use a different type of thread, we're going to get something totally different as far as the look of it. Something totally different. We might almost be too narrow on this pattern. Let's take a look and see what we got. It's beautiful stitch quality. But again, depending on what we do with the settings, we're going to be really able to change the look on this 
dramatically. They might, might almost be too tight. Our stitch length might be a little bit too short, but let's see what you guys think. So this is our top stitch right here. We're looking at right here. And again, we're sewing with a leather needle, a size 9014. So it's, it's not the ideal needle to be using, but we're using it anyway. Turn us around. There's our lock stitch. Top stitch. I'm going to look. So Emma's calling it a scallop. Can you can spit shine it for me? <laughs> uh, Emma's suggestion we go to the medium setting on the uh, auto zigzagger. What do you guys think? We've got it. I mean, it's a beautiful looking stitch. If you could run your finger over it, it's very, very nice. But, you know, it, it doesn't, it's so tight. I don't know if it really shows us the bird effect. Maybe it's a bird with its wings tucked in, kind of like a falcon when it gets to the highest point in the air and it's going to do its dive. It pulls its wings in close to its body. So it's like a bullet going towards the, uh, the ground. But, I'll, I'll look at the live chat, see what you guys suggest on this. See what you suggest. Ooh, that's a fun screen name. My Adventures. My Adventures. Oh, that's Doreen. That, that must be a different Doreen. That's not Doreen from Iowa down in Florida. Because I don't think Doreen, Doreen has traveled to Florida. That's got to be a, a brand new Doreen. So we have a, I think we have a brand new Doreen, right? Yeah. And if you're brand new to, uh, if you're brand new to live streaming and you're brand new to this channel, the reason some people in the live chat, you kind of look at their name and then they've got this little wrench. They've got this little wrench thing at the end of their name. That means that they're a moderator. So they're part of my leadership team, and they're there as a resource to you. They're also there to kind of monitor things, answer questions if they feel comfortable to do it. And uh, and also in a rare instance, if we get some, sometimes we do get some folks that pop into our live streams that, you know, they, they've got res, less than honorable intentions, uh, and they might be typing things that are not appropriate. We like to maintain kind of a family-friendly type setting here, which I think is good. Uh, then one of those moderators will step in and take some sort of action as well. So they're there also to keep a safe environment for all of us as well, which I really am grateful for. And that's Sonny and Paula, uh, Paula, excuse me, Sonny, Paula, uh, we've got uh, Emma, we've got Bill. And now also recently we added Veronica as well as one of those uh, moderating team members. So. Oh, okay. Doreen Mendoza. Mendoza. Beautiful. Beautiful name. Wow. Beautiful name. So we can decrease. Well, okay. Paula, Emma suggested let's go from right now we're set on the widest setting for the uh, auto zigzagger. Right now we're set super wide. Paula, what do you think? This is your show, dear. What do you think? Emma suggested let's go mid range. But Paula is saying, why don't we sew it again, and why don't we just make the stitch length a little bit longer? What do you guys think? Should we leave it leave it here and lengthen the stitch length, and then if we don't get the desired result, then we can try moving this from the, the widest setting where it is right now to the middle setting or even to the normal setting and just see, again, how we can manipulate this stitch pattern. I mean, it, it's 
it, there's so many ways to do this, you know, there's so many ways to, to get different outcomes and none of the outcomes are wrong. They're just, they're just different. You know what I mean? They're just different. Okay. So as a first step, cause, um, I just want to keep us kind of, kind of bouncing forward here is I'm going to get this back underneath the pr uh, presser foot attachment. And also I've got the, um, I've got the presser foot pressure a little bit on the lighter side now because we're working with hundred percent cotton, even though I've got that stiffener in between kind of like, uh, you know, acting almost like a, a batting for this sew off. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're, we're going to leave the, uh, the auto zigzagger alone. We're not going to make any changes to that. And based on Paula's suggestion, we're going to go from 30 down to, why don't we go down to like around 20 ish and just see what result it gives us as far as the look of that stitch. We'll try that first. And then we can maybe try Emma's suggestion of taking the auto zigzagger from the widest setting where we're at right now uh, to the mid range. See, see what impact that has. All right, let's do the same stitch pattern. This again is what we're calling kind of our bird pattern. Our settings right now, we've got the auto zigzagger set on the widest setting it can generate for the stitch pattern. Again, they come from these cams that are inside of the machine, cams that are similar to this one here. Actually, this is the identical one. This is the identical one that was with that other auto zigzagger that I have. And then we've got our stitch length right around on 15 or 20. So let's see what let's let's see what it looks like. Let's do this. All right, here we go. And I am having a heck of a time. Let me just pause for a second. I'm having a heck of a time of steering this thing. Look at how it's just going at that material. And again, if you're joining the live stream a little bit later, oh, that was Paula, you are so smart. No wonder. You, yeah. That was exactly what we needed to do. Exactly what we needed to do. Look at the impact that we just brought. And we might be able to tweak it even more than this. But look at the contrast. All we did, all we did was change the stitch length from a real tight one to right around 15 or 20. And now we're starting to get, the, the bird is coming out. The bird is coming out to say, hello. Yeah, it is. And Emma's making some other suggestions that are equally relevant. Again, based on what we do with the attachment, the auto zigzagger, whether we set it at normal, at uh, the mid range or at the widest range, and then what choices we make as far as the stitch length is going to totally give us a different output output as far as this stitch pattern that you can see in front of you right now. Same stitch patterns. This one is right around 30 stitches per inch. This is around 15 to 20 stitches per inch. So we basically cut the stitch length in half by 50%. That was Paula's suggestion. And now we got birds. We got birds. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I'll leave it up to, um, it, we can try sewing this again. And uh, Emma had had an, an equally good, oh, I didn't show you guys the lock stitch. Sorry about that. So this again, this again are the, the stitch offs we've done so far. This is going to be our top stitch. The first one we did, the bird stitch, the second one. Those are definitely page 34, you guys. And again, our setup is not ideal. Our setup is not ideal. We're using a leather needle, a leather needle to sew cotton. What the heck? We're using a leather needle, a size 9014 by Schmetz to do this sew off on this 100% cotton with this stiffener in between. Now, what is that lock stitch going to look like? We don't have a good setup. We're using a leather needle on Paula's very rare 1940. Singer 201-2, is that lock stitch, stitch going to be a mess? Nah, I doubt it because this machine is running better than a Swiss watch. Now, 
That's our lock stitch. Absolutely as it should be. Again, we could make it better. We could make it better by using more of an embroidery based type thread. We could make it better by using a smaller, more appropriate non-leather needle. But we're getting some solid, solid results. Solid results. I couldn't be any happier. Yeah. Well, let me see. Let me look at the chat. I think the cams are what you need in the I'm not sure I follow Emma's comment. Um, it depends on the slant sewing machine. I mean, if you're dealing with a machine like the one I sent out to Sonny, a 404, you still technically could use an auto zigzagger on that slant machine, but you've got to take into account that it's got to be able to clear that throat plate opening on the attachment. And these throat plate openings on the attachments are huge. You can look at that. So you've got a lot of swing clearance as that material. Again, the needle bar is staying in a fixed position. It's going up and down like this. But because that attachment is moving this material by this pivoting back and forth very rapidly, uh, it creates the illusion that the needle bar is moving. It isn't. The needle bar is in a fixed position as it's manipulating this material back and forth uh, over the feed dogs. So, but... The, what makes it stand out is a I'll, let me show you the box. Let me show you the box. Now, if you look at the box for Paula's, you're going to see that this is kind of what it, oops, I'm knocking things over. You're going to see that this is what Paula's box looks like, right? It says Singer Automatic Zigzagger, and it's got all these little cool etch a sketch type things blah, 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 going all over the place kind of looks like that the one that was designed i think mainly they were kind of pitching it towards the big sister to the featherweight the big sister to the featherweight the 301 they came out with one that looks a little bit different it's got a it's got an orange band on the bottom and it's a totally different part number i can show you this here let me show you Paula's, for example, the part number for this auto zigzagger is 161102. 161102, which is perfect for any Singer lock stitch machine that's not a slantomatic. Okay. This one that was designed with, I think, the 301 in mind, it's got a different uh, part number. It's 161103. So it's only one digit off. You can kind of look at them together. So that kind of gives you an idea. And they're going to be identical in how they work. It's just going to be like the feet that go with slantomatic machines. Like on Sonny's uh, 404, they're going to have an angular look to them when you're looking at them from the side. Because that's the way the, the needle bar, the needle bar is also angular. It's on an angle. And again, Singer designed the slantomatics with the idea that it gave better visibility to the sewist as they're watching the stitches being laid down because that needle bar is angled forward, you're able to see those stitches being laid down much more rapidly than you are in a standard type uh, straight stitch machine. So that was their motivation in creating the Slantomatic series. Better visibility down at the needle. It's the same reason that they ended up eventually on the class 15 machines, moving the uh, upper tension unit from the front of the machine to the faceplate so that people had a clearer view down to what's happening down at the needle. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say that I've got, you guys are talking about the cams, right? Let me see. Let me see if I have anything different. Yeah, I do. And this is what I was talking about. 
So in this little baggie I have that I had this other auto zigzagger in, this auto zigzagger that is kind of rusted up a little bit. So I didn't want to send this to Paula, obviously. I've got to service this and get it back working perfectly. And then I'll be able to put it with another uh, machine, right? So you guys have seen the bird, you've seen the arrow stitch, but they also have this one too, which I think is a super cool pattern for the auto zigzagger. I call it the building block one, but you guys might have a different name for it. They also have this one as well. And these auto zigzaggers would come with three, typically with three cams in the box. There's three little slots for the cams. And on one of the auto zig zigzaggers that I have, it happens to have this stitch pattern. So I can leave it up to, uh, I can leave it up to Paula. And if she wants to, even now in the live chat, say, hey, can I trade the arrow cam for this one? Or can I trade the... Uh, you know, the um, the bird cam for this one and have a different choice, uh, that would be that would be fine. You know, they basically have a standard zigzag. They've got some of the other options. But this one is always a fun one to sew, isn't it? And we could, heck, we could sew it today if you guys want. Uh, we can trade it out for the bird one that's in there right now and try doing this one that is kind of a building block. There we go. You can see it now. Yeah, that's kind of a cool one too, isn't it? Which, uh, now, just to clarify, Paula, so that I'm understanding, this is um, this is the building block one right there. And then we've already used, where is it? We've already used, we've got the bird one. We've got the bird one in the auto zigzagger right now. And then we've got a standard zigzag one here. This is more of a standard zigzag type stitch. And then we've got the, um, the arrow stitch. So these, these are the three, wait, strike that, reverse that. These are the three that I had intended to send with the auto zigzagger the bird one the standard zigzag and then the uh, arrow stitch we've done we've actually done all three of these we've done the uh, the zigzag first we did the uh, the um, arrow stitch and then we did the bird stitch so if you're wanting to have me pull one of these out one of these three and substitute it for this building block one I'm happy to do that. Just let me know which one you want me to pull before I get this puppy uh, packed up and get it ready to be shipped to uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So, Paul is... Paula, if I'm understanding correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, Paula is going to go with the standard setup, which is the bird, the standard zigzag, and then the arrow stitch. And then what I'll do is I'll hold this building block one in reserve to go with one of the other auto zigzaggers that I have. And some other uh, customer that ends up getting another machine from the workshop will get the building block one. And again, you can find these. Um, these are not unicorns. You can find these online on Etsy. You can find them on uh, uh, probably on eBay. And some people, all they're doing is selling just the cams for the auto zigzagger. So Paula could always elect to get additional cams for her auto zigzagger. Yeah. All right. All right. Glad we figured that out. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so let me, so I don't send her two birds because that would be awkward. I'll put the other bird one back over here. 
because the bird one is already in the machine. All right, what else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? Right now, we're going to rap, apparently. And I'm not a huge rap fan, but once in a while, I just go wild. I just go wild. So we're going to go wild for a few seconds here while I get something to drink. So is that thirsty? All right, volume back down, volume back down. Yeah, Sunny loves cams, doesn't she? Sunny is a lover of cams, big time, big time. Well, I'm going to just make sure that Paula is satisfied with seeing kind of what we've done with uh, this auto zigzagger. You can kind of see the little field of stitches that we've laid out during this live stream. We kind of started with a you know a basic zigzag we kind of changed the look of the zigzag we went to a real tight zigzag and then an elongated zigzag and then a teeny tiny zigzag and then we went to the arrow stitch and we kind of messed around with that a little bit and we finally got a great result based on paula and emma's suggestion of hey make it wide but make it tight and we started getting closer to the mark and again these stitches would have even greater clarity even greater clarity if our setup was not with a size 14 leather needle and we were using an embroidery style thread, kind of like the trilobal stuff, the yellow stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, so setup has an impact as well, doesn't it? And then finally, we bounced over here to the bird one. And we, uh, I, I don't know what we had. We had a flock of birds that were crashing into each other to start with. And then we made the adjustment based on Paula's suggestion of, hey, Let's make it longer, but let's stick with the wide setting. And we got a beautiful bird result on that. And again, I already showed you guys a lock stitch. There's no difference in the lock stitching. The lock stitching is absolutely spot on as well. So really some great results. Great results with this Rolls Royce. Now we just have to see. Paula, are there any other stitches you want to see this machine do before I take off this auto zigzagger? I'm going to take the auto zigzagger off and move back to a standard presser foot attachment. I'm not seeing any response from Paula, so I'm going to assume that she is happy with what we've done with this auto zigzagger on her machine. And I'm going to move us into more standard sewing now using this 201-2 from 1940. Cool. All right. You know what? When, when a friend, I consider Paula not just a customer, but she's a friend. When a friend and a customer says, I'm thrilled, we're on the right course. Yeah, we are. Okay. So let's enjoy this outrageous music that really doesn't sound like it belongs with cow country. But you know what? Our audience is diverse too, isn't it? 
and we have some folks, probably like Dr. T over in Finland. I haven't seen Dr. T for a while. Hope he's hope he's okay. But he probably enjoys music like this. Maybe. I don't know. So all I'm doing is just unscrewing this. And it's got a little notch so that you can use a screwdriver to really snug this down. I've got fairly strong hands, so I just tighten it by hand. But you just kind of loosen this up. There we go. Kind of work it free. And when you work it free, bring it to the rear first. Because, again, you have to clear the needle bar where that's coming over the top of the needle bar. See that? So kind of wiggle it back once we're clear of it. I think I'm almost clear of it. There we go. There we go. We got it. Hey. And these are surprisingly heavy. If, if, if you're taking this off near your machine, just have a real good grip on it. Because if you drop this puppy against that beautiful finish, it's going to do some damage. I don't know what these weigh, but holy mackerel. I feel like I'm holding a gallon of milk. Yeah. But they are a neat, they are a neat innovation, aren't they? And remember again, they need maintenance. There's maintenance areas inside of here, like I showed you, and then these two primary oiling points right up here. There's two little holes. You know, about every depending on the environment that you have the machine in, if it's a real dry environment like Arizona, uh, then you'll probably want to oil this about every six to eight hours of sewing if you're using it quite a bit. So here we go. Yeah. What are you going to do with Paula's box? Too many crickets. And the other neat thing, uh, this one that I'm sending with Paula's machine, is it's got also, not that you probably need it, but maybe it has some great suggestions in there that, would have helped us out even more but we didn't need it because you guys are you guys jumped on the opportunity of giving input and we were successful but here's an actual owner's manual an original owner's manual for the singer auto zigzagger i'm going to send this with paula's auto zigzagger and then she can on future premieres after she reads it because you guys know i probably won't read it i just won't she can give us some really good insights and input or if others of you have these owner's manuals as well for the auto zigzaggers, you can give us some great ideas when we're using it on another machine on how we can get even better results than we would otherwise. So, yeah, there you go. Don't stop to the gimme. I have no idea what this guy's singing about, but he's he's excited. And I might be wrong. Maybe maybe the original auto zigzaggers actually came with four cams because you got another slot here. One, two, three slots. And then you've got the cam that's already in there. I'm guessing it probably came without the cam. But at any rate, I'm sending Paula's with the three cams that she just selected. So, yeah. And the sew-offs will go. But don't jump in the box, guys. We're not done with it yet. Stay over there. Stay over there. All right. So I'm going to set these to the side so I remember that these go with the machine. I also have another Singer box with some additional attachments and some extra bobbins as well for Paula, along with the gold-plated needles. I'm going to set all of those to the back so I remember to ship those with the machine this week. I am just knocking stuff over. I'm glad you guys can't see that. I mean, everything I'm, I'm like walking into it, it's like, ah, crash! All right, let's get the other presser foot on, the correct one, for regular sewing. And it's that easy. Now we've gone from an auto zigzagger setup back to our normal, more standard presser foot for this machine. Presser foot attachment, I should say. So since we have a leather needle, doggone it, let's do some leather sewing. 
I'm going to set these other sew-offs to the side. And I always send sew-offs like this to the customer. That way they can see and hold in their own hand what they saw on the live stream like this. And then Paula has all this space over here. So she can always re-sew any of those patterns and kind of just mess around with them. So, And actually, you know what I'll do, though, is I will do one stitch row here of a straight stitch on this cotton as well. So I'm going to hang on to that for a second. So what we have here is we've got two layers of saddle grade leather, probably about six ounces of leather, six to seven ounces of leather, somewhere in that neck of the woods. I'll do a single layer and then we'll add the second one to it and we'll do two layers of saddle grade leather. Anyone watching the live stream, I, I want you to see the, the more delicate side of this 201 and being able to use the, the uh, auto zigzagger attachment and generate beautiful embroidery stitches like this. But I also want you to see the rugged side of Paula's 201 as well that can take saddle grade leather like this and sew it like it's a cotton. And I've got to remember just to bump up my presser foot pressure a little bit because now we're going from sewing cotton to sewing leather. And that really is a key when you're working with your presser foot pressure, make sure you adjust it depending on the materials you're working with. So I'm going to give it about probably about a good solid turn and we'll see if that's enough to give us good feed with it. I know it'll be enough for one layer, but maybe two, we might have to bump it up a little bit more. So. All right, saddle grade leather. I don't know that I'll ever be a, a lover of rap, but some of these beats are kind of kind of catchy, aren't they? All right, here we go. Saddle grade leather. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Ha <laughs> ha! I forgot to adjust the stitch length. So we're going to be sewing a teeny tiny stitch to start, and then I'll lengthen the stitch length, and we'll sew another one next to it. <laughs> oh, is that a gorgeous stitch? Hello, you. Hello, you. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh my. There's our lock stitch. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> yes, I'm bopping in my seat. I can't help it. All right, now we're going to actually lengthen that stitch length and sew a, more of a full-size stitch next to it. You can see the contrast, then it's kind of cool. Kind of cool! All right, let's try this again. I'm going to make it kind of close to that one because we have to still do the two layers, too. All right, let's give us a try again. It's... It's really going to be a cool contrast. We're almost at satin level there. Now we're going to do a near full size stitch and compare and contrast. Here we go. Yeah. Wow, that was so difficult. I didn't know if we were going to make it through that. It was so tough, so challenging. Paula's machine is just laughing at this leather saying, really? That's it? That's our challenge? No, we're going to double it now. We're going to double it. Beautiful stitching. Oh, my goodness, gravy. Let's take a look at that. Oh, and I've got to use Paula's display holder. Yeah. Let's take a look at these, and then we'll jump into two layers. Come on, guys. Come on over here. Hopefully I have room. I think I do. All right. <laughs> that 
is a solid page 34. Oh, don't, don't tilt over. Oh, you were trying to show the thickness. How thoughtful of you. Yeah. So we just sewed through the equivalent of a belt. We just sewed through a belt with Paula's 201-2 from 1940. The machine didn't even, I mean, it was like it, it was like there was nothing underneath there as far as the machine was concerned. It was that easy. And again, that's the benefit of the potted motor when it's optimized. It's only got 0.6 amps, right? It only has 0.6 amps, less than an amp. But because of that direct drive gear to gear, it just goes after it with no hesitation. Shut the light off. Come on, focus, you silly thing. You were doing so well. There we go. Beautiful stitching. Let's turn it over and look at the lock stitch. The lock stitch is going to be a little bit harder to see, but beautiful, beautiful lock stitching as well through this single layer of saddle grade leather, about six ounces of leather. Absolutely, page 34. And again, not a light sew off. Look at the thickness from the side. Hey, guys. Don't fall over. Hang on, hang on. I bumped you. Hey, look at those people are dancing. Nice, nice. All right, let's go up to two layers now. Two layers. Two layers of saddle grade leather. And no, I didn't test this already, so we're kind of shooting the dark here. Let's keep our fingers and toes crossed. You never know, right? You never know. All right, press your foot down. I'm going to give us another little turn. Oh, that was fun. That's on the computer? Oh, wow. Weird. I'm going to give another little turn to this. I think we're good, but I'm going to bump it up just a little bit higher. Now we're up to two layers of saddle grade leather on Paula Noel's 1940 Singer 201-2. One of only 10,000 in its production group. One-fifth of the size of a normal production group for Singer. Folks, that is not an easy sew off. If you think it is, then send me a video of your machine going through this much leather as easily as Paula's does it, and I'll send you something special. Kind of like I'm going to send something to Renee for looking up the information on Paula's machine. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Two layers of saddle grade leather. Two layers. Here we go. I'm a little bit nervous. I did not test this off camera. I did not test this. Fingers and toes. Do it. You know what? That's almost embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That is, Paula, I I am, I don't know that I'm going to, I don't know what to, it's too easy. 
It's too doggone easy. Paula's machine is just making this look like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Look at that. Let me pull this out and let's look at this. No hand start, no hesitation, two layers, saddle grade leather, two layers, saddle grade leather. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And if anyone's new in the live chat, and I see that Paula and probably uh, others are helping new folks to understand, why do I call this, why do I call this the Rolls Royce of Singer Sewing Machines? It's because historically, and I also got confirmation as well from Rolls Royce out in Beverly Hills, who was running commercials on this channel for a number of years. That Rolls Royce from 1948 to 1952, out of any machine that they could have picked, partnered with Singer and was supplied 201-2s that they used on the floor of their production facility to sew the interior leather panels for the Rolls Royce automobiles coming off of that line. When you look at stitches like this that Paula's Rolls Royce just sewed, any any question as to why Rolls Royce would pick a machine like this to sew those panels where stitch presentation and stitch visibility is so prominent in a luxury automobile like that? They wanted stitches that were just like, oh my goodness gravy. Look at those stitches! They could have used any machine. I mean, they're Rolls Royce. Hello? They chose a machine just like Paula's to do this. Absolutely, page 34. And this is a lot thicker than what Rolls Royce would have been sewing with this machine. A lot thicker. Panels are usually going to be about two to three ounces of leather. Folks, those are those are what I call bragworthy stitches. Those are bragworthy stitches. When you're talking about going through this much leather, I'll try to get you an edge where you can actually see it. Maybe on the end, that's easy. Now maybe this end. I have no idea. Well, when you're going through leather like this, you're going through leather like this, and you can maintain stitch integrity like that, going through a single layer. Okay, that's impressive. Going through two layers of saddle grade leather. This stuff is used to make gun holsters and other heavy duty applications for leather use. And Paula's machine just went through it like it was cotton, like it was a cotton. Now, what about our lock stitch? Are we going to see something crazy off? I mean, we got beautiful top stitching. Yay, beautiful top stitching. But don't I say it all the time? The lock stitch is what makes a lot of people crazy, fearful, afraid, terrified. Oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm going to hide underneath the rock because you don't expect to see something like this. That is a solid page 34 lock stitch through two layers of saddle gray leather. Now, granted, we're using a leather needle. Hey, who, who thought of that? Two layers of saddle gray leather and this 201-2 from 1940 sewed it like it was a light cotton material no problem whatsoever and lay down break worthy stitching on it to boot folks any question as to why paula is so excited to get this machine when you see something like this Plus the stitching we already did using that auto zigzagger. 
this is a dream machine for this wonderful gal out in the state of Florida, out in West Palm Beach. And it's going to be shipped this week. And then she can sit down to leather like this or cotton or whatever she wants to sew. It doesn't matter. She's going to be able to have a lot of fun, don't you think? Unbelievable. Unbelievable stitching. Top and lock. switch all right i'm being silly i know i'm being silly but folks incredible a definite pass i'm going to throw that to the back i wanted to show the delicate side through the auto zigzagger doing stitching like this but i also wanted to show you guys the strength of this machine also and i think we've already accomplished that but we're going to do some more sew offs as well we got to do it right we got to do it let me just check our time to see how we're doing as far as time. Almost two hours. Time passes so quick when we're together, doesn't it? Time passes so quick when we're together, uh, especially when we have the opportunity to celebrate and present a machine like this. Incredible machines. And they do, uh, you know, they do surprise, I think, a lot of people when they're right at the top of their game as far as what they're able to do. What we're doing with saddle grade leather is what a lot of people think you need uh, to get a sail right machine for, or one of the light industrial machines. A machine like this, when it's running at the top of its game, it can sew leather like this all day long with basic maintenance, because all of the innards of it, forged steel, they're not gonna wear out. All right, let's do some more leather now. Let's do some genuine elk hide this stuff, depending on where it's cut from the hide, is even thicker. Look at this. If we end up doing two layers of this, look at that. We're going to start out with a single layer. And then I'm going to contemplate, should I try two layers? Because again, I'm working with a thread that is not the greatest thread ever. Not the greatest thread ever, but we're going to give it a go probably give it a go let me just give my glasses a quick wipe wipe off and I probably because we're we almost are going two hours already I'm not going to take time to take you through the progress shots but please let me ask a favor of you Circle back because I'm going to add to the description of this live stream right in the description area. As you come into the video, you'll see the description area right there. I'm going to have all 10 sets of Paula's progress shots on the things that I did to this machine. And even those, we're talking probably hundreds of photos, hundreds of photos of steps that I took this machine through are not the entirety of the restorative process that I took Paula's machine through. It's just not. Because I would, I would spend all my day taking pictures instead of working on the machine. But I do a combination of both. So please circle back and make sure you look at those progress shots so you can appreciate this doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen that you can have a 201-2 sewing at this level. You could go to any other place and get another 201-2. You're not going to find it sewing at this level. It's not going to happen because it hasn't gone through this process at the workshop. It hasn't gotten the workshop magic. And that is so central to the machine being able to sew at a level that according to people that sold these machines, they sold them door to door like a Fuller Brushman back in the day. People that used to take 201s into people's homes and present them with the hope of making a sale. I've had those folks reach out to me and say, your machines sold better than the ones that came right out of the factory. So that's a testimony. And I'm not trying to be braggiocious. I'm just saying my process is great and it, continues to get better. So this is result of all those steps. Yeah. All right. Elk hide. Let's do elk hide next. Genuine elk hide, which you can see from the side with a single layer is even thicker than the leather we just went through with the saddle gray. And it's a lot more rigid because of the chemical processing of it. So the piercing threshold on this type of leather is much higher even than the saddle gray. It's even going to be higher than that. All right, let's do this. 
Let's do this. All right, I'm going to bump the music down for a second. I'm going to bump the music down. It's actually going to bump itself down. Good music, good music. Okay. We've got a real quiet workshop right now. Well, we, we had a quiet workshop. Hold on. All right, I turned the music way down. We're sewing through one of the toughest leathers that we could possibly sew. I would put elk hide even above protected full grain leather, which we're also going to sew, by the way. I want you to listen to Paula's machine run. I want you to listen to what does a machine at the top of its game sound like. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Making sure I have everything set. Yes, I do. Let's get closer. Yes, there we go. You're such a good camera today. I'm going to give you a treat once we're done with this live stream. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll wipe off your wires or something. All right, here we go. A single thickness of genuine elk hide. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I even took it slow. I wanted you to see. You don't have to go pedal to the metal with Paula's machine. It's just going to lay down absolutely bragworthy stitching. Like it's nothing. Like it's no big deal. No big deal. Yeah. It just makes it look so easy. And I know, I already know, I'm going to get messages from people after this live stream today. It happens every single time. And they're going to say, why doesn't or why can't? I've tried sewing lighter leather than this with my 201-2. And I can't do it. I can't do it. What's wrong? It hasn't been in the workshop. Hello? Hello? And not only that, but stitching that is absolutely as it should be. There we go. The thickness again, looking from the side. Folks, that's insane. That's crazy thick. What about the lock stitch? Let me spin it around. Look at the lock stitch. No difference. Come on, camera. You've been doing so well. Come on. There you go. So I'm going to declare a solid page 34 on the top stitch on the lock stitch as well. And now what we're going to do is if this hasn't already demonstrated the strength of this machine, sewing through elk hide this thick, it's the equivalent of a belt. Now we're going to try doubling it. We're going to sew through two thicknesses of this. And again, I'll show you what that looks like. And we'll do it back to back. So when we look at the lock stitch on this side, we'll be able to see it much better, much easier than if we were going through and trying to look at it on the grain, even though this is a fairly flat grain. That's what we're gonna to try to go through. I should probably have a size 100 or a size 110 Schmetz leather needle to go through this much leather, but we're gonna try it with a size 9014. Hopefully I don't break it, but we're gonna give it a go. Through two layers of saddle gray leather like this, I hope you can see in the shot the thickness of what we're going to going to attempt. That's twice the thickness of a standard heavy-duty belt that a man or woman would wear, say, with their blue jeans or whatever. And this is not a light industrial machine. This was built as a household sewing machine. 
but it's sewing on steroids now after going through all the steps at the workshop. Close to 145 steps if you count all of them individually. That's a lot of steps. All right, let's give this a go. Little bit nervous. I did not try this off camera. I did not try this off camera. And I'm going to give us a little bit of an edge on that lock stitch because that thread is going to have to work its way all the way back up through these two layers of genuine elk hide. I'm going to just very, very delicately bump up our upper tension just slightly. We're, at, we're only at about three and a half the way I have it calibrated right now. Take us up to about four. Hopefully I don't take away from that top stitch. Again, whenever you make adjustments to the upper tension, if you go too high on the upper tension, you're going to have a great lock stitch, but you could potentially take away from the stitch definition of that top stitch because this is going to be pulling up that much harder against the pull down of the bobbin case. And if you go too far with this, you're going to take the stitches out of balance. I hope I didn't go too far. I only just went up a little bit. So now we're going to try what a lot of people would consider to be a little bit in, of insanity. A little bit in, of insanity. We're going to be going through probably about 10 to 12 ounces, almost actually more than that. It's closer to 14 ounces of genuine elk hide. Look at the end over here. That's what we're going to attempt on Paula's 1940 201-2. Will we succeed? I have no idea. I have no idea. I hope we do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we will. <laughs> if we had another 201-2 on the workbench, I would be really, really nervous right now. But I think we'll be fine. I hope we'll be fine. Yeah. And that camera's doing something like a cool crazy little dance to the music right now look at that yeah oops that was the wrong way to move that light didn't like that shut that light off that camera is just like on some sort of minute made it's doing like a little wiggle jiggle thing you see that Let me try to change the angle a little bit, see if that helps. Yeah, it did. <laughs> All right. And I don't have the light on Paula's machine right now. If I turn the light on, the camera will really go crazy. But when Paula is sewing, I've got an LED light in here, obviously, and she's going to have great lighting on the needle and on the bed. So right now, because we're filming, I'll leave the light off. All right, let's give us a try. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I did not try this off camera. But I know what the 201s will do after they go through the workshop magic. So I think we'll be fine. So, all right, here we go. Everybody's taking a deep breath. Everyone's taking a deep breath. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. If I had a size 100 or a size 110 Schmetz leather needle, no big deal. But it's only a size 90. It's only a size 90. Oh, all right, here we go. Let's see what happens. The voice of confidence. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Wait a second. Did we do it? Are we done? That's it? Paula, are we, do we actually, we already sewed it? That, what? That easily? Are you, What? That, that much leather, no hand start, and the machine just, come on, really? Spin that back. Spin, rewind that. Dr. Singer just rewound it, and he said, Scott, it was that easy. It was that easy for Paula's machine. Paula's machine is a monster. It's a leather-eating monster to go through that much leather that easily and wait until you see the stitch quality. Wait until you see the stitch quality. Unbelievable. 
What a machine. What a machine. Unbelievable. And again, don't even think for a second that another 201-2 that hasn't gone through the workshop would be able to do this this easily. It, there's no way. I, I will challenge anyone, anyone across the globe to show me a 201-2 going through this much leather this easily. And I will mail you something special because you've got a process that is impressive. So this is what we just sewed through, folks. That's what we just sewed through. And if Paul is going to get this, this is going to go with the machine. When she feels this in her hand and she feels the density of this leather, this is not a soft leather. It is a get in your face, knock yourself down type of leather. This is a serious leather. Elk hide is hardcore. And we just went through two layers of it. You can see the thickness. Turn the light on, then you can see the thickness even easier. It's actually worse. I like it with the light off. I'll turn my light on the camera. There we go. You're not going to see, you're not going to see sew-offs like this in other channels. Unless it's in still shots. And they do a lot of editing. This is a live stream. Anything could have happened. But I had enough confidence in Paula's machine and my process. We went through that much leather. You're already seeing the lock stitch, sort of. Yeah, that's our lock stitch. We went through that much leather. And we laid down stitching like this. The bottom row is our second sew-off through two layers. Just so you can compare the two. That, again, is what we just went through. And our lock stitch. Again, our lock stitch is going to be harder to get good, solid definition to because it has to pull that thread all the way back up through these two layers. Come on. Focus. You've been doing so well. Been doing so well. And Paula and I had talked about this just the other day. When you're sewing at this level, and sometimes even at a lesser level, but when you're sewing at a level like this, especially using a substandard uh, Coates and Clark thread, uh, if you once in a while catch a glimpse of a little bit of a tilting of the stitch, that's typically either going to be a needle that's starting to tire out, and we've really worked this needle pretty hard. Uh, it can also be that as even though I bumped up the upper tension a little bit to compensate for defining this lock stitch, since it's much harder through this much material, I may not have bumped it up enough. But we're getting a real good, let me get this centered on here. I'm trying to get this centered and I'm not doing so well at it. Let me try it again. There we go. So incredible stitch quality, the top stitch, the lock stitch as well. And could we make it better? We absolutely could. If we were going to be sewing at this level all the time, I would be changing out the needle more frequently than we have during this live stream, which is not at all. <laughs> 
we're using the same needle I did on all of the off-camera sew-offs and also the ones on this live stream as well. So this needle is getting a little bit more tired. Well, we'd also use a different type of thread as well, a thread that can manage this kind of thickness of leather. The lower gauge, the lower quality threads, they struggle a little bit more with maintaining stitch integrity, although the machine, the machine is compensated for a tiring needle and a substandard thread by laying down stitching that. You know what? Look at that. Do I need to even say it? It's solid page 34 plus. It's break worthy. And even the lock stitch is absolutely bang on. I could make it better by even bumping up that upper tension a little bit more. But absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous stitches. And I agree with the owner. I agree with my friend Paula. Beautiful stitches. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on this anymore. This machine just knocked it out of the park. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change away from the leather for just a little bit. Also, let me look at my time. Okay, I want to be sensitive to the time as well. This time as well, because I can see our flock is dropping off. Our flock is dropping off as as this uh, live stream goes longer and longer and longer. And that's okay, because a lot of folks, thousands of people are going to watch this afterwards, too. I'm going to turn our light on for a moment. There we go. Yeah. You've seen me sew this before. This is commercial-grade uh, upholstery material. It's got almost a chalky feeling to it because of the coating that they put on this stuff. We've got two layers right now. I want to try to do six layers of this. And again, I'm, I'm risking some skip stitches. I'm risking skip stitches because this leather needle is starting to get tired. I can tell. But we're going to do it anyway. So I got two layers. I'm going to fold it in the middle. Get us up to four. Fold it again. Get us all the way up to six layers of commercial upholstery material. Why do I show you a sew-off like this? Because because Paula has an upholstery business? Uh, no, she doesn't. But this type of material demonstrates a couple things about the machine. Number one, it demonstrates the strength of the machine in being able to go through six layers of this. It demonstrates the, 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 the fine-tuning and the calibration of the machine in being able to maintain stitch integrity through this many layers of a woven style uh, upholstery material like this using a leather needle. And it also demonstrates the versatility of the machine. Paula already knows because she's smart. She already knows that this machine can handle pretty much any material that she puts in front of it. You've already seen it handle a crazy amount of leather. You've seen the delicate side of it managing uh, light cotton with that uh, automatic zigzagger. Now we're continuing to step into the heavy duty range of putting it through this many layers of uh, commercial upholstery material. So with all that blah, 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 and I'll sew down the left side so that Paula, when she gets this, can sew down the right side if she wants to. And we'll see how this machine can manage this. Actually, I'm going to flip it the other way. <clears throat> there we go. I think our presser foot pressure is adequate. So I'm just going to try buzzing through this. Again, I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit. Kind of shooting down the side of the machine. Yeah, you can see that. I want to shoot down the side of the machine so you can see that I'm not just saying the machine has enough strength to do this level of sewing with no hand start. A lot of machines would require that you hand start it to go through this many layers of commercial upholstery material. Paula's machine doesn't need it. It's got that beefed up, fully optimized 0.6 amp direct drive gear to gear motor. And it's going to go through this just as easy as it, as it did the other softs. The only caution and the only concern I have is with a tiring needle and subgrade thread, will we have any skip stitches? I hope we don't. But if we do, we know what caused it because the machine is absolutely timed perfectly right now. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just do this. All right. Here we go. I didn't sew real straight because I kind of just let it do its thing. 
So I kind of, I started on the left and I kind of worked my way to the middle, but Paula still has enough room. She can sew this again herself. And I'm looking down the line of stitching. Absolutely page 34. I'll show it to you as well. And we'll do it on Paula's uh, stitch off holder. And not a single skip stitch. That is very, very impressive. Considering the, the, the condition of that needle right now, it's really gotten a workout. But it's a Schmetz needle, for goodness sakes. We wouldn't expect anything less, right? I wouldn't. Incredible. Incredible machine. And of course, when this machine is packed up, it's going to be packed up to be air airdropped into uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. My regular packing process, if you're new to this channel, or if you watch this later uh, and you're curious, well, what do you mean by your specialized packing process? Uh, I've got a playlist dedicated just to my packing procedure. So you can check that out on the channel as well. Go to the playlist. You'll be able to see my packing method being used uh, where I'm actually videotaping it pretty much from beginning to end. And then you can see what it looks like compared to other packing processes out there. <clears throat> All right, let's get this set up. And this is our top stitch. I wanted to make sure I had it orientated correctly. All right, let me get this light on again. All right, I'm going to get the camera as close as I can. I want you to see this top stitch. And again, I want you to look at the thickness of what six layers of commercial upholstery material looks like. I'm going to turn my light on the camera. I think it'll be better. All right, let's take a look at these stitches. This again is our top stitch that we're looking at first. <clears throat> I'm going to look at it vertically, too, because sometimes it presents a little bit differently when you're looking at it vertically. There we go. Look at those cute little people behind there. Paula made this, in case, in case I didn't mention that. This sew-off holder that we're looking at right now, Paula made that as a special uh, gift to me and to the workshop uh, at Christmas time. Folks, I don't know what you can see on camera. I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to hold my breath as I'm moving it up and down so you can see the, the quality of these stitches. And Paula will be able to see this actually holding it in her own hand. The quality of this stitching through six layers of commercial upholstery material with no hand start, with a tiring needle, with subgrade, Coates and Clark, all purpose. I'm just going to say it. It's like not really great thread. It just isn't. I'm sorry. Sorry, Coates and Clark. Sorry, but it's not. It's not the great premium thread. And in spite of all of those limitations, Paula's 201-2 just went through this, number one, like it was a light cotton sew-off 
or something super lightweight. It was just like, what's the big deal, Scott? What's the big deal? And that again is our top stitch. What about our lock stitch? Let's take a look at the lock stitch now. I'll try to turn it like this first of all. We'll look at it on the sew off holder. Try to get it to set there. Stay, stay, please. Would you guys, would you guys, ladies, gentlemen, could you hold on to this for me, please? Hold on to it so we can look at these stitches. Thank you so much. Thank you. Folks, I'm going to take a deep breath because I'm holding my breath literally. That is absolutely a page 34 plus lock stitch through six layers of commercial upholstery material. Again, anyone in the world that wants to send me a video clip of your 201-2 going through this equivalent, showing the start and everything so I can see that you're not hand starting it. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Look at their little shoes on the bottom in there. That's kind of cute. Hello. Unbelievable. A solid page 34. I, I can show it to you vertically too for kicks and giggles, but you can see it already. It's a page 34 plus lock stitch. Unbelievably beautiful. Folks, this is, look at their little shoes. Their shoes are so cute. This is the workshop difference, you guys. Not only did it do with absolute ease, but it laid down a stitch that's break worthy. Top stitch and lock stitch. Okay. Okay. I won't dwell on this anymore, but again, look at what we went through. It's just, it's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. Let me throw that to the back by the other sew offs. I'm going to move these cute little people to the back again. I want to be, I want to be sensitive to how long we've already run, but this is a special event for, for Paula Noel. And I know she doesn't mind if we run a little bit longer. So I'll just apologize to the rest of you. If you have to step away, I know we've had a number of people that had to step away. I get it. And a lot of those people will even send me personal notes and they'll say, had to step away, got something going on. It's a Saturday. I get it. I totally get it. And those folks will be the same ones that circle back and will rewatch Paula's live stream sometimes two or three times because it's just so cool. It's just so doggone cool. But if you are able to stay and kind of stick it out, we're almost done. And But I really want to make this event that's centered on Paula Noel and not cut corners. You know what I mean? I want to do it right. My father used to say, do it right or don't do it at all. He had another more colorful way of saying it, but you know what I mean. So, <clears throat> all right. So what do I have left? I've got protected full grain leather. I've got acrylic fiber. Acrylic fiber doesn't really do justice to showing the quality of the stitching. So I can buzz through this, but I'm not even going to, other than just showing you that it stitched it, you know, this is the stuff that they make awnings out of. It's uh, incredibly tightly woven. It's almost like a Kevlar material. And one or two layers of this, if I fold it in half, it's going to be the equivalent of probably about six ounces of leather. It really is. Uh, and I've offered, if anyone wants me to send them a sample of this, so you can try it on your machine reach out to me. I'll mail you a sample of this acrylic fiber so you can try it on your machine. When the needle hits it, even a, a size 9014 leather needle like this, when the needle hits it, you can actually hear it crying. A Schmetz needle crying, but it literally does. It hits this stuff and it goes, 
Oh my gosh! Ah! It literally does because this, this stuff is just so doggone tough to get through. I mean, they imagine what awnings are exposed to: winds, weather, temperature fluctuations, everything else, and they they stand resolute. That's how tough this stuff is. So I'll buzz down one side just for kicks and giggles. It would have been kind of interesting to sew this with that uh, auto zigzagger, but you know, oh well. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to change the shot just so you can see. No hand start. I literally have hit this stuff, and it literally stops the machine just momentarily. There we go. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll just buzz down for fun, because that's pretty much what this is to the machine. It's fun. It's not even a challenge. All right. Here we go. Wow, that was, I, I didn't think it was going to make it. That was, that was really difficult. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, that was so unbelievably tough. Not. Not ridiculously easy. It's a gorgeous stitch. Wow. All right. You're not going to be able to see it because this stuff is just a booger to see. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. Let's try it like that just for, for fun. See, from my angle, I can see it perfectly. But from this angle, it's just really, really hard to see it. At any rate, it's a beautiful stitch. I'm going to send this for Paul as well. So she can sew it again on the 201. The formation, the spacing, and everything about these stitches is just absolutely spot on. It's it's really tough to see. That's why you know I was I wasn't even gonna bother showing it to you. There's our lock stitch. But the stitch formation and the presentation is just absolutely bang on. That stuff will make you go blind. If you stare at it too long, it's going to make you go blind. But at any rate, beautiful, beautiful stitch off with Paula's 201-2. Uh, Two layers of acrylic fiber, the equivalent of about four to six ounces of leather. So I'm going to throw that to the back as well with the other sew-offs we've already done. we got a little mounting pile back there of sew-offs we've done. Let's do some uh, protected full grain leather as a wrap-up to this live stream. And I'm saying a wrap-up just because we've gone two hours and 28 minutes. I'd like to wrap it up pretty quick here. And I think we put this machine through the paces. I think that anyone watching this afterwards will be convinced that this machine can pretty much take on anything Paula wants to put it through when it gets out to West Palm Beach, Florida. And she's going to have to add extra. I know that Paula, I think Paula told me that she's in a gated community and she's going to have to increase the protection because someone's going to try to get in there and steal this from her. Yeah, they will. They will. That's okay. They'll lose. They'll lose. All right, let's stitch off this protected full grain leather. I'm going to try to go around the edges as best as I'm able. No guarantees. Checking my shot. Yep, that's a good shot. So we have all kinds of little turns that we're going to try to do with this uh, oddly shaped protected full grain leather that I sewed, that I that I cut out, that we're going to sew now. And I cut it like this intentionally to show this is a monster strong machine now. It wasn't when we started. And if you look at those progress shots again that I'm going to post in the description, you'll see straight away that the machine had some major wiring issues. And again, this is an original owner machine. I bought this machine directly from the original person that bought it back in 1940, brand new. So not counting me, not counting me, because I'm a transition point. It's been in my collection. Paula's going to be in direct succession to the original owner. 
that bought this machine brand new. And that's the way I like to do it. I don't want to get a machine where the providence and the history of the machine is an unknown. I want to know exactly about the history of that machine. So we're going to be demonstrating the control under restraint. In other words, I'm going to be sewing this slow because otherwise I'm going to be crashing and burning. You know what I mean? I'm going to be off the leather. I'm going to be everywhere else. I'm going to try to go all the way around this intricate turning and designs. And then we'll look at the stitch quality when we're finished. Okay. All right. So you've heard Paula's machine run multiple times. I'm going to put on some fun music for us to do this last sew off. See if I can find something interesting, fun. <clears throat> In contrast to contrast to the rap music and all the crazy stuff we've been listening to. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Yeah. This will work. This will work nicely. The 1812 Overture. Yeah. Here we go. I didn't have that third cup of coffee today. I wouldn't be sewing nearly this straight. Yeah. Back to the finish.
that's what I call fun. <laughs> oh, I love ending with the 1812 Overture. Is there a better song? I don't think so. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. So much fun. I didn't even sew over my threads. How did I manage that? Unbelievable. Well, what a great culmination. What a great culmination to be able to, let me grab our stitch off holder that Paula made. What a great culmination. Uh, actually, let me do them in order. We'll look at the protected full grain leather first. This odd little shape that I decided to try to sew. And then we'll look at this saddle gray leather that I just buzzed around to the 1812 Overture. And we'll check out that as well. You can already see absolutely gorgeous stitching. So here's our, here's our protected full grain leather. And I'm seeing absolute page 34 stitching. Kind of go around here, get the camera focused. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's look at the lock stitch. Here's our lock stitch on this protected full grain leather. Camera is saying, where do I focus? Where do I focus? See if this light helps, maybe. Okay, now we're focused. Now I'm gonna shut the light off. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, totality of the stitching. I'm going to drive you guys nuts if I continue to try to 
get the camera settled right on there. So Tali's stitching again tells a story of absolute near perfect stitching by this 201 dash two. So let me move this out of the way. Let's look at the one we did to the 1812 overture, but beautiful stitching, beautiful stitching on the part of this 201 dash two. Let's throw that to the back as well. So this is the one that we were doing to the 1812 overture, and we're actually listening to a different version of the 1812 overture right now. So it's kind of an appropriate wrap up, isn't it? It's kind of started somewhere over here. Yeah, it looks like my starting point. And we went So let's look at those. Folks, that is absolutely spot on. Let's turn it over. I'll show you the totality again real quick. Lock stitch. Let's look at the lock stitch as our final assessment of the readiness of this machine to graduate from the workshop. Uh, you know what? Congratulations. You are a graduate. This incredible 1940 201-2 that's heading to West West Palm Beach, Florida. I can't even talk anymore. Folks, that, you know what? You guys know that I'm, I am the equipper of the very talented sewists that are part of our group. There are some people that are just incredibly gifted and Paula and Emma and Sonny and others are in that group and Roz and Renee and I could list everybody in this live stream can definitely sew at a level above mine. But I just made something that's almost frameable it's almost frameable and it's not my talent it's not my gift my gift is in getting the machine to the level that it can execute stitch quality like this that's my gift and then i turn the machine over to someone like paula that says watch what i can do with this machine now that you prepared it scott watch what i can do oh my gosh that's exciting This again is the lock stitch, you guys, with a needle that probably is ready to poop out. Totality of the stitching. Isn't that a shot? Look at look at Paula's machine in the background. Look at that. Here, let me do this. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a great live stream. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you, I know many of you interacted with each other and many of you have extended congratulations to Paula. Well-deserved because this machine is now going to be packed up. So it'll be protected enough to be airdropped in the West Palm Beach, Florida. Watch the skies, Paula. It's heading towards you this week. It's going to be heading towards you. And yeah, what a great wrap up.
What a great wrap up. <laughs> yeah. So a quick summary again of what I'm knocking things over again. What do we accomplish during this live stream? What do we accomplish? If anything, I hope. Let's go there. Yeah, right there. Let's go right there, right there. Yeah. All right. So we started out, we started out this live stream with the auto zigzagger and we did all kinds of fun stuff like that. Yeah. There we go. Almost got it. Yeah. And like that. And we sold acrylic fiber, which Paula will be able to see the stitch definition. We really can't see it on camera very well. And we did, what else we did? What else did we do? Did We did uh, saddle grade leather, two layers of that to show the strength of the machine. And elk hide, two layers of that, which, you know what? No hand start. My work on the machines amazes me sometimes. This machine, Paula... Put on your seatbelt, dear, because you're going to need it. This machine has so much reserve power, it's going to blow you away. Look at that. I mean, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And then we did six layers of commercial upholstery material. And then we did this little sew-off here. It almost looks like a bird or maybe a, I don't know what it looks like. But we sewed this as well, this protected full-grain leather. And then as a culmination, I love the 1812 Overture. We did this saddle grade leather and I created a piece of art, at least at my level, a piece of art. Yeah. This is called a sew off sandwich on this channel. And it gives this machine the right of passage to be able to graduate from the workshop and head back home to her new owner. Paula Noel. Yeah. What a great ending. What a great ending. We're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah, we are. Oh, my goodness. And if you joined us late, you got to check it out. You got to post some comments or something. Because I know that to describe Paula as excited. Yeah. Understatement. Let me ring the bell. And let's listen to the end of this incredible music. Ha <laughs> ha. 1812 Overture! Alright, you guys direct. No, you guys are the directors. Paula can direct. I'm just going to get in the back. I'm getting in the back. Yeah, hello there. Hello, you gorgeous. 201-2 from 1940! Ha-ha! Trying to get the right angle. I can't get the right angle. Can't get the right angle. Nowhere. There we go. This is the right angle. This is the right angle. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Ha, ha, ha. All right, all right, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. This is your moment. 1812 Overture in honor of Paula Noel from West Palm Beach, Florida. Come on, show your stuff. Do something. Strut. Turn your light on? Okay, let's turn your light on. There we go. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Yes. 
yes, 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 yes. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. The end of the song. Congratulations, Paula. Thanks, Dr. Singer. Thanks, Singer Repairman. What a great live stream. Oh, yeah, baby. 